Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Ramadan Kareem, and welcome back to Cyber Night Season 3. Today, our guest is uh, James Petri. How are you doing today? Hey, Hamad. I'm doing really well. Thank you for having me. Uh, we're very, very glad to have you here. Um, James, Principal Product Marketing Director at Elastic, and uh, well known to be a blue teamer. Am I correct? That's right, yeah. Blue teaming, um, security operations has always been my, my passion at heart. It's, it's what I've been doing my entire career. Amazing, amazing. And correct me if I'm wrong, I believe Uber use uh, Elastic in their backend. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Uber, Lyft, uh, many of the equivalents as well. Uh, essentially what Uber do is uh, they use our uh, geo data functionality. So they, they map, uh, you know, what's closest to you, which driver should pick you up, that sort of thing as well. Uh, I'll also mention the Uber team, not only do they, do they use us in the app, but their, their cybersecurity team uses us as well for their security operations center. So that's uh, pretty interesting to see that use case as well. Cool, cool, cool. Great. Uh, can't wait to hear more about it. Um, today, we're going to be talking about search, solve, and uh, succeed. But before we get into that, I'd like you to briefly tell me about yourself and the audience, if that's all right. Sure thing. So yeah, hi everyone. I, as uh, Hamad was saying, uh, I'm a product marketing director at Elastic, uh, focusing on our security solution. Uh, yes, my title is um, in marketing, but uh, you know I have a very technical background. Uh, been doing you know cyber my my whole career, my whole life really. Uh, I joined Elastic after being a long time user. So I've been using Elastic for almost eleven years now, uh, pretty much since it became an actual product. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been building custom, you know, SOC solutions, uh, doing a lot of extensive detections and response with Elastic. Uh, and I still try and, and give back to our users and community whenever it's possible. I'm a, I'm a firm believer that, uh, you know, as a cybersecurity industry, we need to work together as much as we can. So I created a few tools as well, uh, something like, um, you know, when Log4 Shell came out earlier in the year, I published like Honeypot data. I run a tool that tries to look for uh, malicious, um, you know, certificates being used, as, which is called witchfish.com. So uh, I still try and be active within the community and give back as much as I can. I've uh, been with Elastic almost four years now. Um, and the reason I joined is because I want people to be as successful with Elastic as I was. Um, I've got to travel the whole world, speaking to users all over the globe and, you know, sharing the knowledge about Elastic. So, uh, yeah, it's great to be here today. Great to be on this, uh, on this session. And I'm happy to talk more about uh, what we can do to help in the security world. What an amazing background. Uh, I'm very excited uh, to, hear, to hear your session. And uh, I'd like to give you the mic so you can uh, enlighten us. Absolutely. Let me just go ahead and share my screen here. All right. Here it comes. Okay, here we are. So I have a few slides to share today and then I'll be jumping into a demo. Uh, so we'll be able to see what Elastic can do for your hands on as well. Uh, but I thought I'd first start to talk a bit about um, why Elastic and a bit more about what we do and also why we focus so heavily on search. Uh, yes, of course, this is a security conversation, uh, but search is very important to security. At least that's how uh, I feel, that's how we feel at Elastic about it. So it's important to know, like, um, of course, if you're watching this, you know that we live in a world that's continuously connected. Uh, everything sends data, everything's doing something, everything's connected to a network, uh, and obviously, that brings uh, certain challenges, not only in the cybersecurity, but also making sure those systems are always available uh, and ready whenever we need them. Uh, of course, um, that implies that there needs to be certain uh, tooling in place to be able to do that and certain tools as well to be able to secure them. So these are the, the challenges we try to focus on as an organization here. So first of all, uh, we'll start off content is becoming hard, harder to find um, because there's so much of it, right? There is so much data to work with these days. Uh, it's typically a challenge to find the exact bit of data you need. And this is something, you know, we, we focus on really hard at Elastic being a search engine. Uh, so, you know, if you had to use Uber, for example, and it couldn't find your location or where you wanted to go, that's a problem. So this is one thing we're trying to help fix here. 
um, IT is becoming more complex. And the reason it's becoming more complex is because we have more tools and functionality available to us. So even if we think about systems like uh, Docker, Kubernetes, uh, remote working, um, you know, uh, mobile devices, we have a lot of technology available to us, but collecting data and securing that technology has become more complex because of all the different types of systems that there are. And of course, tied very closely into that are the cyber threats involved. So the attack landscape now has grown significantly because of all these various different types of devices. And also, attacks are becoming more sophisticated because thankfully, uh, you know, we're protecting our devices more. So attackers need to work a bit harder to try and gain access to our networks, um, you know, uh, take over hosts. So that's why they're becoming so sophisticated because uh, now it's become more of a challenge. And what we've started to see is once an attacker gains, uh, you know, access to a network or access to a device, they will do everything they can to stay on that system. So whatever malware they run or whatever, you know, worms they deploy or Trojans, they make sure that they're very, very persistent or, or sticky, that they can stay uh, and be resilient on those hosts without being spotted. And that's why they've become more sophisticated. So this is where Elastic hopefully comes in. Um, obviously, there are more tools than just Elastic, but uh, as, as a company, we feel that we're in a very good position to help just because of how well we work with significant amounts of data. And hopefully we'll see this as part uh, further on in the presentation as also as part uh, of the demo. You may have heard things like, um, you know, security data lakes and X. So we'll be talking about those concepts today. Uh, and Elastic, you know, can be considered both, right? We, we've been pushing very hard to become the ultimate uh, security data lake. And I started talking in the beginning about why search, right? So these are the three main reasons why it's so important. So first of all, whenever you search for something, you need to get relevant results. Imagine in the, in the cybersecurity world, you're searching for a uh, particular uh, malicious behavior, or you're searching, let's say, for a network event with a specific uh, DNS request or IP address. You need to make sure that what you search for is giving you the results you expect. If you're using a data lake or a system which doesn't do that, then that's going to be problematic. So Elastic as a search engine really helps in these use cases. And of course, if you're gonna be doing those sort of searches over you know, potentially petabytes of data, it needs to be fast, right? You can't afford to have things uh, be slow. Searches need to return in seconds, not minutes. So Elastic uh, is very focused on making sure that whatever you search for returns back as quickly as possible. And uh, I mentioned this already with the petabyte uh, situation, but today it's all about scale, right? So no longer is the situation, oh, I have a uh, 100 gigs of data, that's a lot. You know, some organizations generate 100 gigs of data in a few, other, in a few hours, that, that's nothing. Um, we also need to be able to scale on demand, right? So it's no longer having to have to worry about, oh, I don't have enough uh, capacity or enough compute power. Um, Elastic tries to solve that scaling problem by being a horizontally scalable system, which means the more you need, the more you can put at it, and Elastic grows with your requirements. And you can see here, uh, here's some examples of using search for security specifically. So there's two types of uh, searches we'll be talking about today. Uh, one is your traditional, you know, real-time search for things like indicator of compromise during threat hunting, um, and also correlation rules, because that, of course, is a search. Um, the searches are scheduled because you want rules to run on a schedule uh, to look for that potentially malicious behavior. But we also have searches running on endpoints. So as Elastic, um, this is where the XDR world comes in, because we also ship uh, an endpoint security uh, agent as part of our product. That agent is looking for malicious behavior on the endpoint itself. So not just with the data you have in your data lake, but also anything that might be unusual on the host. So for example, let's say uh, someone tries to open uh, a suspicious 
a Microsoft Office document. Um, and there is uh, an unusual process that comes as a result of that. So for example, it tries to run a macro, very common uh, phishing technique. So that's sort of what we're looking for on the endpoint, as well as looking for things like ransomware and malware. So those are searches running on the endpoint, but of course it is still a search. That search and then uh, globally within the data lake or within the platform allows us to have a very good visibility over everything that's going on. And at the same time, it helps reduce what's known as the dwell time. Uh, the dwell time basically is the amount of time that an attacker has been living in your ecosystem, within your infrastructure, within your environment. The quicker you're able to search, the lower the dwell time is going to be, hopefully, of course. And for those of you not too familiar with Elastic, some of you may be, but if you're not, here is what our search platform looks like. Uh, you might have heard this, or you know, Elastic sometimes is referenced as the Elk Stack or ELK. Uh, we, we call ourselves the Elastic Search Platform these days, but of course you can call us whatever you like. Uh, but it really boils down to um, uh, having the data lake, which is Elastic Search. We think of Elastic Search as the data store or database. This is where all your data is living. We have Kivana, which is the, the user interface. So as security analysts, this is where we will be, right? This is where we'll be running our, our, our searches, our correlation rules, our threat hunting, our endpoint management. This all happens in Kibana, our dashboards, uh, looking at our network data, all within Kibana. And lastly, we have, of course, we need to bring the data into Elasticsearch. This is using these days what to call our Elastic Agent. Uh, so our Elastic Agent is a centrally managed agent and you can run our endpoint security integration. You can run things like network uh, data collection. Uh, you can collect logs from pretty much anywhere you like. So uh, with integrations, it's much, much easier. And this is you know, with what, where the power of the data lake comes in because you're bringing all of these different data sources in. You're analyzing them with the stack or the search platform, and then you get actionable results out. So whether that's the result of a rule or an alert, whether that's a dashboard, whether that's um, you know a, a table or whatever you need, this is how uh, a data lake can assist you in security. Because once you have all that data coming in, you need an easy way to search it and a quick way to search it to give you actionable results. So this is uh, you know the core concept of everything we'll be talking about. Now uh, that was an introduction to Elastic and also an introduction sort of into the data lake concept for security. But now let's talk a bit about some of the top of mind cyber trends that we're seeing today. And also how um, the reason I'm doing taking this approach is because I'd like to talk about how for each of these trends I'm gonna mention, Elastic can be used to help. And it's very good examples because it's uh, events that we're seeing uh, right now within the industry. So the first one is uh, we're seeing a lot of increase in supply chain attacks. So the first you know, major one that has happened in recent times was the SolarWinds event, which happened, I think, just about a year and a half ago now. Um, and more recently, we had the log for shell uh, the log for shell exploit, which was a remote code execution vulnerability in Java, which, of course, was a major, major uh, incident, right? Uh, almost everyone runs a Java application and the severity of this attack was um, uh, as, as high as it gets. You can run remote code on, uh, on a system without any form of authentication. For those of you who aren't too familiar, uh, I, I included some diagrams here and I'll also be showing some examples in my demo. But uh, I did want to highlight this as a security trend that we've been seeing because I don't think these are going to slow down. Um, so I'd like to talk to you today as one of the talking points about how Elastic can help you uh, to detect and potentially prevent these sort of attacks. Uh, we've also seen uh, a lot of these happen uh, with uh, coding tools like Node. So if any of you have application written in, no in Node.js, uh, we've seen a lot of supply chain attacks on Node pack ma package manager. So uh, we've seen that increasing uh, pretty much I've, I've been hearing at least one a week at this point. So that's why we'll be talking about this uh, and how Elastic can help today. And the next one is um, we're starting to see as well uh, increased attacks against uh, 
solutions like identity providers and also cloud providers. So uh, identity providers are people, uh, organizations like uh, Okta or Azure AD. Uh, so anything that uses the, uh, the SAML protocol. So essentially, um, or even, even Active Directory, of course. But uh, last week, as we know, um, we found out about an Okta breach that happened through a third party provider. And we're starting to see more and more of these. And the reason this is so important is because if your identity provider is compromised, you're at risk of you know, your entire infrastructure being accessible if you don't have the right precautions in place. Um, even if you happen to be using uh, you know, a hosted service or a cloud provider, these are equally as um, susceptible and equally as destructive if there is any potential uh, breach. So we'll be seeing how Elastic can help in these sort of events as well. Uh, and again, I included some, some examples of this. Uh, we did write a blog post about uh, our findings so far, about about the Okta situation, uh, and even some other uh, events happening around the same threat group. So if anyone would like to visit that link, uh, I've put it at the bottom over here. Moving on to my third trend, which we'll be talking about today is we started to see the return of uh, destructive malware or ransomware. When I say destructive, I mean uh, it uh, affects what we call the master boot record. So it, it deliberately corrupts part of the operating system, not just to encrypt your files, but to make them completely unrecoverable or not have your system boot up. So we started to see this uh, more recently with uh, the hermetic wiper that we've been seeing or uh, the, the malware created for Ukrainian entities. Uh, I don't think that's gonna slow down. I think these are gonna keep happening. So we'll be talking as well about how Elastic can help with these situations. And I think these are really good examples to talk about within the current climate. And here's an example of those. Uh, I did link um, to our security research page. So for those of you who don't know, we do have, of course, a dedicated security research team um, and they publish regular articles about the latest findings that they have, any tools, any indicators of compromise that you can use. So uh, you can visit that link. There's a lot of really good information over there. So how can Elastic help with these situations? Of course, I'm gonna show it in the demo, but Essentially, first of all, when it comes to the destructive malware or ransomware, like I said, we do have our endpoint security uh, integration, which can prevent uh, you know, ransomware and malware from running if we determine it is malicious. And in fact, we did prevent both the, the wipers that I spoke about. We can help detect uh, any potential supply chain attacks thanks to the way we collect data and also thanks to you know our increased visibility into applications and i'll give a i'll show a really good example for log for shell and lastly because we can collect logs from pretty much anywhere including most identity providers and, and cloud providers and other systems we can help you detect any potentially malicious behavior within those systems uh, we even include uh, detection and correlation rules by default for these systems in particular. So hopefully you'll be able to see uh, what that looks like uh, and how we can help. So from, a, from an XDR perspective, so for, if you're not familiar, XDR stands for Extended Detection and Response, where in reality, the concept is bringing more tools together instead of having a separate EDR system or a separate uh, you know, a uh, SIM system or security analytics system or a separate system looking at cloud security as an example. We're trying to provide as much as we can within the same platform to make sure we make your lives easier. So uh, as Elastic, we, we currently have um, obviously SIM and endpoint security as I've been saying. And in the future, we will be focusing more on things like Docker and Kubernetes uh, and making sure we can spot threats within those environments as well equally as we do on uh, Windows systems, Linux systems, Mac OS systems, so on and so forth. So that's what we mean by XDR. And none of this would be possible if we didn't have that data lake capability, uh, if we didn't have that elastic search functionality to search uh, at scale. So I just wanted to highlight that again because it is really, really important to understand the concept. I've spoken quite a bit, so I'm just going to move uh, into a demo now. So you can see some of these things um, 
uh, for you know as, as they function within our solution so over here i am within kibana if you remember uh, kibana is the visual layer into the elastic stack um, which is basically retrieving data from Elasticsearch. Uh, I am within the security solution here. Uh, there are other solutions like observability and enterprise search. Uh, for the sake of this session today, of course, we will be focusing on security. Um, and what I'll start to do is I, I want to show actually how I am collecting this data. I think that's very important. Uh, because I spoke a lot about Elastic Agent, and I think it's important for you to see what that looks like. So under my management menu here, uh, we have what we call our fleet. And our fleet is essentially our uh, group of agents within our infrastructure. Uh, our agent can work uh, completely offline, so it doesn't need a cloud connection, uh, just, to, just to point that out. Um, and we can see here, I have a couple of endpoints within my environment. Uh, each endpoint has a, a policy. So if I had to look at one of these policies, we can see what data I'm collecting, but also if I'm running any endpoint protections on that machine. So for example, I'm running endpoint security, I'm collecting data from Office 365, I'm collecting threat intelligence from a service called abuse.ch, I'm looking at uh, my uh, Windows uh, event logs, so on and so forth. So if we look at my endpoint security policy as an example, we can see what uh, protections I have enabled. So I have malware protections on, I have ransomware protections on, memory threat protections on. So a lot of different ways to try and prevent uh, specific bad behavior from running on the endpoint. And at the same time, sending relevant data to my cluster, to my data lake. So I can run further checks, visualize it, and do whatever I want with it. So uh, very, very powerful because this is all happening out of one agent. So once I collect that data, and then of course I can enable our alerts. Uh, we ship with about close to 700 of these different rules uh, that run on the data within Elasticsearch. And I'm gonna show you some of these results and what they look like. So actually I'm going to start off with the supply chain example. Let's start off with um, Log4Shell. So I have a, a Java application within my environment which is vulnerable to Log4Shell and I exploited it. So I ran um, a command which invoked the exploit. And I had a couple of alerts trigger here as a result of that. So primarily we have uh, an alert here for suspicious Java child process, and then we had some malware prevention alerts. Let's start off with the alert view. So imagine I am a security analyst and I get this alert. What does Elastic give me to start trying to investigate this? So we can see we have the alert name, of course, and then we have some detail here, some very quick detail. So this is saying, listen, root on this host executed this process uh, with these arguments via a parent process of Java. In fact, that's why it's called a suspicious Java child process. We can, of course, get more detail. So if I wanted to see uh, more detail about this event, I can see the severity, the risk score. I can see the current uh, criticality of this host. So we do something we call host risk scoring as well, which is very nice. Uh, and I can see a bit more information about that. We also have another view. So uh, if I click on this analyze event option here, I'll be able to see uh, a more of a, a graphical view, sort of uh, how, how the processes spawned off of each other. So I can see, you know, Java ran that process SH, and then we can see that there was a wget request, which tries to download the file, and we can see that over here. Uh, at the same time, there was a curl request, and then they tried to change the permissions. Uh, but thankfully, it wasn't successful because we have our malware prevention on. So in reality, when this application was exploited, it tries to download malware and it tries to execute it. Um, so if we look at the arguments here, you can see it's trying to download the file and run it. Um, and uh, this file was malware. So it's part of the Mosey family, which is a botnet if you're familiar, but thankfully because we have our Linux prevention capability on, we stopped it as we saw in the malware prevention alert earlier. 
So that's one example. Uh, let's look at some other alert types we have, like the malware prevention one. Uh, one of the reasons I want to highlight this because it's very common that you're collecting some form of threat intelligence within your environment, so some form of indicator of compromise. If you're doing that, uh, we will also highlight if you have any matches with your threat intelligence feeds. So for example, in this malware prevention alert, it's saying, listen, um, not only did Elastic determine that this is malicious, but uh, your threat intelligence is also saying that you have a known indicator of compromise here. So it's saying it matched this specific hash as an example. So as an analyst, as we're investigating, uh, it's very easy for you to be able to tell uh, if something is known to be specifically bad. So we save you some time by applying uh, this enrichment. Thanks to our endpoint security integration, we can also start to take some action. So you'll notice here in my take action menu, I have this isolate host option, which lets me take this host off the network in case I suspect that there might be a potential data exfiltration or potential lateral movement, which I want to avoid. So right from within the console, you can click isolate host and it will take that host offline. Um, and this works across all operating system types, Linux, Mac OS, and Windows as well. Now, since we've noticed a couple of suspicious alerts here, one thing I might want to do as an analyst, I might want to create a case or an incident. So we have, of course, case management built right in. So if we start from this alert as an example, I might want to say, let's create a new case with this alert. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'll get this create case window here. Um, I'm just gonna call it demo to make things a bit easier. We can give it some tags and let's call it Mozi as an example. And I'll put in demo as well. Uh, our cases, apart from allowing you to collaborate with your team, it does also allow you to synchronize with any third party uh, tools or third party incident management systems. So if you have something like a Jira, IBM Resilient, a ServiceNow, uh, we do allow collaboration with those tools as well, as we can see here. So let's put this as highest priority and we'll create the case. So at the same time, not only are we creating the case within Elastic, we're also creating the issue within Jira. So I don't have to leave Elastic as a platform to do that. Everything is managed right within here. So that's great. We created our case with that alert. Let's go ahead and add our other alert here, which is this malware prevention alert. Uh, and we can now add that to the case we just created by adding to our existing case. So you can see this is the case we just created. I'm going to hit select. And now that has also been added to our case. There's one more related alert here because um, I want to show examples of using other data not just endpoint data. Uh, so let's say you're collecting very rich network information. Let's say you're doing, uh, you have something like a Zeek or a core light within your environments and you're collecting network packet data. Uh, you can of course combine those data sets together to look for specifically uh, bad activity. So as an example, one of the things I was doing in this case is I wanted to see if a process is trying to download malware over an encrypted channel, something using TLS. Because I have that data available to me, I was able to create a rule within Elastic. So this is one of the custom rules I have here. Uh, and you'll be able to see uh, the detail of what I created. So this is what the query looks like. So in Elastic, we have the concept of a correlation query with our event query language called as EQL. And it allows me to craft rules like this. So I can create rules looking at various different data sources. So in this case, I'm saying, listen, I want to check if uh, my process coming from my endpoint uh, with a username of root um, is followed by uh, a network request, which is followed by a TLS connection, which is followed by a malware event. So that's, it's that easy. When we say we want to look for a sequence, we're looking for a sequence of event looking at different data sources. And in this case, I did have a match. So I will just show you here uh, what that looks like. Uh, I'll just open this up in full. And what I'll do as well 
is we can filter for the different events in the sequence. So you can see these are the four events which led up to the alert happening. Uh, and if we look at, for example, the TLS event, we can see that information here. So this connected uh, over port uh, 443, uh, and we have the full TLS information as well. So we'll be able to see things like the certificate information, so on and so forth, because um, it's really important to be able to, to combine endpoint data as well as network events. And this is bringing the power of that XDR platform together and the data lake. Because I have all this information in my data lake, whilst at the same time running malware preventions on the endpoint, I am able to build these really sophisticated um, alerts. So I just wanted to make sure we highlight that because I think it's pretty important uh, to understand the concept. Okay, let me just close this window here and we'll go back to our um, case now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and look at the case we just created because I want to do a few more things. So you can see this is what the case looks like. Um, let's change it to in progress because we're currently investigating this. And at the same time, when I change the case to in progress, it will also change my alerts to in progress, which is very nice. You can see we can synchronize the alerts. So now I have to do some follow-up investigation because I'm an analyst looking at this data. I can see there was a malware prevention alert which was downloaded by a Java, but I don't know why this happened. Um, I'm not sure if this was an application exploit or not. So one thing I can do is I can look specifically at my application data. So one of the beauty, uh, one of the beautiful things about using Elastic and having that data lake is that you can combine the different types of data. So in the beginning, I was saying how much and how many different data sources we have. Well, with an Elastic, you can use them all really easily. So if I wanted to now pivot from my security events to my application events, I can do that. So over here I have observability, uh, which is looking at more of a CPU usage, application performance, uh, logging. Uh, we can now switch to there and see exactly what our Java applications did. Um, so I will go here and I have this Java application, which was my vulnerable one. And if I click on it, I'll be able to see what happened within my application code when that exploit ran. And this is where the power of search comes in because um, you have now searching across all these different data sources within one platform, within one data lake. And we can see here, um, we had um, the application run. So basically this is the first thing that happened when the exploit ran. And we can see pretty much everything uh, we can see even the malicious request that was sent. So in our security data, we didn't see this. We saw the result of it, but we didn't see the actual exploit happening. Well, now we're seeing it within our observability data. So we can see that command. We can see also, more importantly, that right after that ran, there was a, a GET request, so a web request, to another IP address, to another system. And in uh, Log4Shell, if you're not familiar, this is actually what downloaded the malicious application file. Um, so we can see here, try to download a malicious Java class. And we can see all of that happening within our data set. So not only did we get the security events and the security alerts and the malware prevention, we saw why it happened. We saw the exploit happening within our application because of the power of that platform of the data lake. So this was my first example, uh, and I think it's really, really important to highlight. And I also highlighted a bit of the prevention. Um, pivoting into the ransomware story now. So if we go back into our alerts, one of the alerts I had triggered was a ransomware prevention alert. So for ransomware, um, we're doing a couple of different things. Uh, one of the behaviors we look at specifically is the process trying to you know be destructive wipe that master boot record so if that master boot record is wiped my system cannot start up again at least not easily i'd have to do a lot of repair work and uh, it's not great to have so if we look at it here let me just find it real quick and 
let's see, where is it? Here it is, ransomware prevention alert. Um, first of all, let's look at the more details option. And we'll be able to see that the ransomware feature here is the master boot record protection. And what's interesting about this is because it's a prevention alert, we killed the process immediately, right? So the ransomware couldn't run, which means nothing else happened after, which is great. So uh, I just wanted to show what that would look like in terms of a master boot record protection, but we'll also look at things um, a bit differently as well. So um, if we take, for example, now uh, malware, which we didn't prevent, so here's an example of malware that we prevented and ransomware that we prevented. But if I let my malware run, so let's say we're running in detection only mode, uh, we can see uh, if it did anything else suspicious by looking at that uh, analyze event view. So we'll be able to see exactly what happened. Um, uh, obviously, uh, it totally depends on the malware here and what it's doing, but I just wanted to highlight the difference between having something in prevention versus detection mode. If it's in prevention mode, we stop it from running and uh, you're pretty safe in terms of um, uh, any destructive operations, but if not, you might end up with a situation like this. So uh, if you're familiar with the wipers, the first wiper we saw back in January, which was known as Bleeding Bear, it actually tried to download a file from uh, Discord, for example. So it tried to use Discord as, uh, as, as a delivery mechanism. And it, as you can see that it ran here, we had four network requests, and you can see it tried to download something from Discord. The file was taken down, so this didn't even run in full, but I just want to show you an example of something being prevented versus something being detected. So we spoke about that. We so spoke about the supply chain attacks and being able to detect those. And uh, lastly, we should talk about um, the identity provider situation or the, the, you know, the, the cloud system provider. So if we go back to our alerts, you might have seen that I had quite a few alerts for like AWS, which is a cloud provider I'm using. And here, because we're collecting the data from that cloud provider, I'm able to have uh, alerts for it as well. So some of the alerts we ship with work specifically on the sort of data. So it's not just things happening on an operating system or it's not just things happening on a network. You can even collect uh, data from these systems and look at the rules for them as well. So if we go into rules as an example, I can filter specifically for uh, rules for Okta. Uh, so this is all stuff that we provide as part of our solution. And you can see here what those look like. Of course, not only am I able to uh, run rules, but I can also search. So if I have a suspicion that potentially I've been breached and I want to search, here's where the power of that very fast search or that very fast correlation comes in mind. So we can search in many ways in Elastic. I'll just talk about one for now because um, we don't have that much time, but using our investigation timeline, I am able to search across all my data. So I'll take a very quick example. Um, imagine I wanted to search for a specific user doing, you know, show me everything that this user did in the last 30 days. All we need to do is create a new timeline. And let's say for the sake of argument, uh, we're looking for user is a uh, root. So this is gonna search across all my data pretty much my entire data lake and show me everything that root did uh, within the last seven days. Uh, obviously, depending on how much data you have, uh, this could take a few seconds or a few minutes, but here we had, you know, over 195 million events and it loaded up in a few seconds, right? So I can see now exactly what root did. So that's why it's so important that you have a fast search that's able to search across everything and give you back results really, really quickly because then you might want to um, go further. You might want to grab those search results and maybe create a dashboard. So that's the last thing I'll show you um, uh, for today. But I have an example dashboard here uh, to give you an idea of all the different types of visualizations you can make and also the types of searches you can run because within Elastic, um, the searches can be very um, verbose or very extensive. So I'm gonna use a lock for shell example again here, but I have this, this is actually public. If any of you want to go to this URL, you can see this live. 
Uh, but here's an example of how we can search through that data and how we can visualize it um, and, and use it to our advantage. So not just for alerts, not just in timeline, but we can create these really nice uh, dashboards as well. So I have a few more slides before I hand it back to Hamad. So um, hopefully you enjoyed that demo. Hopefully it gave you an idea of how Elastic can be used and why it's so important to apply search to your security use cases and use a, a data lake wherever you can. Um, I just want to give you an example of a, a very big user within uh, the region that is using us very successfully for security, which is Emirates MVD. Uh, you can read more about this on our website, but they are using Elastic for, cert for security uh, very extensively, and they're protecting their infrastructure um, uh, really well. And of course, this is some other reasons why organizations choose Elastic. Uh, we already spoke about most of them, but um, the one I really want to highlight again here is the community. Because without community, we wouldn't be able to do anything. Without sharing this knowledge, uh, we'd be stuck. So very important that as a security community, we share as much as we can. That's it for me. Um, thank you very much, Hamad, for having me. Uh, that, that's, that's the end of my presentation for today. James, thank you very much for that presentation and uh, demo. Uh, very helpful. And uh, me and Saf CSP are very much looking forward to seeing you again and uh, maybe doing many, many more things together. Absolutely. Likewise. Thank you very much for your time and hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thanks for having me.